evening. I'm Jan Cobbler. And I'm Chris Meyer. This evening we're visiting the Lunar and Planetary Institute. It's a place where they do a lot of serious research on the moon and other planets so we can better understand our universe. Talking about the universe tonight, we're going to meet a man who claims that he's been in actual contact with aliens from outer space for five years. It's the strangest UFO incident ever recorded. We're going to see the actual spaceship and the creatures from space. Then we're going to visit Texas A&M University and take a look at some professional glass blowers. In our department, Chef Tell shows kids how to cook hot dogs all by themselves. Our medical folklore expert looks into home remedies for hiccups. And Linda Harris continues her great escape to Nashville with a look at the exciting country music industry. When we talk about glass blowing, most of us think of those little ships and pianos and those other little intricate pieces of artwork that you can buy at shops around Houston. Well, tonight, Jan takes us to Texas A&M University for a look at a different kind of glass blowing. A single section of tubing is molded by skillful hands under the watchful eye of a craftsman. The cylindrical shape changes form in the bright flame and becomes a piece of art in the shape of a swan. Swans, ducks, and ships in a bottle are what most people associate with the word glass blowing. But this too is the product of glass blowing. glassblower Jack Shannon is one of only a few hundred glassblowers in the entire United States. He has worked here in the glass shop of Texas A&M University for over 20 years. What was it about glassblowing that intrigued you to take it up? Well, it's a very intriguing job, uh, especially in the beginning. This is when it's very intriguing, and as you progress on and on, well, uh, it... Uh, naturally turns into to a job a little bit more, but it, it still keeps its interest. How did Glassbone get started at A&M? Through their research program, they, uh, back in the uh, late 50s, or the middle 50s, excuse me, and uh, on up through the 60s and to date, well, uh, we have a vast research program going on here, and uh, our glass shop handles uh, all of the glass blowing desires for the campus. Jack's brother, Jerry Shannon, is another of the glass blowers working at Texas A&M. Tell me how and why did you become a glass blower? Well, I suppose it had something to do with my oldest brother being a glass blower at the time. So uh, I just kind of started to work under him as an apprentice 19 years ago. The newest member of the A&M glass shop is Bill Flanagan. He's been blowing glass for the past five years. What do you find the most satisfying thing about your work? Oh, it's building something that you never built before. You know, that looks, you wonder if you can do it, and then when you do it, it's nice. We start out with glass tubing or glass joints or something of that nature, and if you heat the glass, it tends to sag because of gravity. And uh, if you just heat it and don't either keep it rotating or blow in it, then the gravity just pulls it down and sags it. So if you heat it up and it starts sagging or it starts constricting, well, you blow in it to blow it back out to the shape you want. Our glass blowing starts when the person designing the job brings in the job and fills out a work order down in our glass shop. And uh, it's all custom uh, glass blowing. They design it and we build it. And in lots of cases, the, the thing that we build, the article that we build for them, is uh, it's the only one in the world we start out basically with just uh, raw materials. And in a sense, I say raw materials, not just raw glass. It's tubing and joints and stopcocks and things of that nature. 
and we uh, assemble them together the primary process of glass blow to a certain extent. Uh, you just uh, start out with tubing. If it's a column, uh, say you weld a joint on each end. If it's a bigger row column, where you poke indentations in it. Once you have the uh, article finished, then you send it through an oven to anneal it. And this it takes the strain out of the glassware. I asked if he ever had problems with being burned by the hot glass. I think you know, when you work around fire, you get used to fire and it doesn't uh, burn you as bad, possibly. It may burn you as bad physically as anyone else, but mentally you get used to it to the point that it's not as hot possibly to us as it would be to someone else. If somebody wanted to take up glass blowing as a hobby, would you recommend it? Yes, I would, definitely. I think it would be a very interesting hobby. It, uh, it's something that is not very expensive. You can get started in it for very little. A torch and a cylinder of oxygen and a regulator some glass. After some basic instruction, Jerry let me try the basic process of joining the glass tubes. You probably can't tell the tube that I made from the one that Jerry made. What's the most satisfying thing about your work? I think a feeling of accomplishment when you, when you have a challenge and, and it, you perform it and it comes out to your expectations and the person's desiring it expectation. I think satisfaction comes from being able to do a job well and uh, to be proud of it, you know. Uh, it's, it's challenging to a certain degree and there's always a challenge. I don't think that a glass blower ever quits learning. He's uh, always a bigger challenge somewhere ahead of him, you know. And, and that keeps the job interesting.